A unique, life-transforming experience. A life-changing word sessions. An intense worship and prayer sessions. A celebration of God's glory. Jesus Foundation Family International presents her 14th year anniversary conference. Theme, Grace for Enlargement. Pastor Paul Ung. Join us as we welcome Pastor Paul Ung. Dr. Paul Ung was born again in 1980. Since 1982, he has been preaching the Word of God. God Almighty called him into full-time ministry in 1987. Pastor Paul quit his career as economics lecturer and has been traveling some 56 nations serving Christ in prophetic and prayer conferences, evangelistic services, and ministering in various churches. Together with his wife, Rev. Dr. Christina Ang, they conduct prophetic and prayer conferences and ministry training schools both locally and abroad. Pastor Paul Ang has ministered in many megachurches of 10,000, 20,000, and 30,000 members. At the same token, he also preaches in small churches. He believes if Jesus Christ preached to one Samaritan woman, it would be an honor to preach to two persons. God has given him the grace and favor to share pulpit with renowned ministers of God like Chuck Pierce, Cindy Jacobs, and others. Paul Ang Global Vision has organized Mega International Conference annually for the last 14 years that attracted pastors and leaders from more than 30 nations. Recently, God put in his heart to start a kingdom connection for ministers and ministries, KCMM, for fellowship and partnership. By the grace of God, he fathers and mentors many ministers and leaders from many nations. Paul is the author of 12 books. Some of his books like Open Heaven, Prophetic Encounter, Charisma, Personal Prophecy. Church, welcome to the conference, Pastor Paul Ang. And God forgive me for enjoying it. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Reverend Ezekiel Chipozo, right? And your dear wife, Evelyn. Wow, what a beautiful couple. I'm very honored tonight to be with you. And I know God's going to do a great thing in your midst. So tonight, if you hear a word that resonate your heart a word you know God's speaking to you you just declare I receive are you ready? Yes. no matter what you're going through the best is yet to come maybe you had bad news in the past God sent me here tonight good news is coming Good news is coming. Praise the Lord. You must be Bishop Wesley. Praise the Lord. Is that your... Your wife. Wow. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you. That's Apostle Bernice, right? What an honor. And so many of you pastors here tonight. My ministry is very simple. I just boil down to one word. I'm just a postman for Jesus. All right. <laughs> just a postman. And one of the ways that God speaks to me is through scriptures. How many of you, God speak to you through the word of God when you read? So in the same token, God speaks through me many times using scriptures. Amazing. How the Word of God can speak to our life, our situation in a very amazing way. Amen. I was with a pastor uh, from uh, Sydney, 
Felix. And I give a scripture to a man. He was kneeling down when I called him out. And the moment the scripture was given and the first word was quoted, he just fell flat on the floor. He was amazed. He was praying and seeking God. He was going through a very difficult situation. And God just spoke to him through a simple scripture from Psalms. Amen? Okay. Just a very simple word for you, Reverend uh, Bishop. It's, uh, it's uh, Caleb. Caleb, he, he was 85, he says, Give me this mountain. Just as I was 45 years ago, now I, I am still strong to conquer mountain. What does the Lord says to you, my dear brother, is uh, there's going to come a Caleb grace and anointing. It's not only one mountain you're going to conquer. There's going to be many mountains, many assignments, many projects of faith, many lives to impact, many nations to go and to be used by the Lord. May the fire of your devotion light up your way. May the footprints you leave behind lead them to walk with Jesus. May the life you live cause many to obey and walk with Jesus. Psalms 92 verse 12 to 14. Psalms 92 verse 12 to 14. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree and he shall grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Now, a palm tree and cedar of Lebanon. Palm tree is an amazing tree. The root is straight, the tree is upright and straight. No matter what the wind, the storms, no matter what happened, it will shake, it will shake, it will sway, it will bend, but it always come back straight. And that speaks of your life, that you've gone through so much, but you still stand straight. You've been betrayed, you've been persecuted, you have been called all kinds of names. You have been falsely accused. And yet, you are a righteous man, God says. And you will flourish like a palm tree. And you'll grow like the cedar of Lebanon. The cedar of Lebanon is for its strength, endurance, and stability. And that's who you are. Strength, stability, endurance. And you shall even bear fruits. In your old age. And God just showed me a diamond. You're a diamond in God's hand. His light, His love, His grace flow to you, shine to you. And God magnify Jesus through your life. Receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. It's very simple, right? Thank you. Hallelujah. I like your playing so gentle and nice. You are a good man, a faithful man. Your tears are not wasted, my brother. Your prayers are not wasted. Your sacrifice are not wasted. I don't know you from Adam. God, God sent me here tonight to tell you that He loves you. You're going to see the goodness of God. You're going to see the hand of God moves on your behalf. You have a good heart. You have a gentle and soft heart, an encouraging heart. You have encouraged others. But now God encourages you and strengthen your knees. And you will see the breakthrough. You will see the goodness of God. You will see your prayer answered. Your desires granted. Receive. Amen. So simple. Anybody want to prophesy? Just take over and prophesy. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Pastor Robert, right? Just one scripture. Zechariah 3.7. You can put out the screen. 
And while it's being put out in the screen, faithful in little, you'll be faithful in much. Do not despise the day of small beginning. As you're faithful in little like David, you fight the bears, fight the lions in the private. The day would come and God will open the door and you're going to fight the Goliath. And you'll be a promotion, you'll be a lifting, and people will come to know who is Pastor Robert. Zechariah 3 7 on the screen. Praise God. Okay, I just told my wife I'm going to call Pastor Ezekiel and Evelyn to come forward. We'll pray for you before we get to know you more. I'm sure you're blessed with this wonderful couple. And okay, this is for Pastor Robert. If you will walk in my ways and if you keep my command, then you shall also judge my house. And likewise have charge of my cards. I'll give you places to walk among those who stand here. Receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you just come? That was an excellent teaching on grace. Wow. I heard so much teaching on grace, but you brought a different angle, a different perspective. I, I like it. I like Noah found grace. I'm going to find more grace. Thank you, Jesus. Come. I'm going to ask my wife to just come. Would you just raise your hand and stretch your hands and just bless this wonderful couple tonight? Karabasoko. Just put up Habakkuk 2, verse 3 and 4. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. Thank you, Jesus. You know, one word from God can change your life. Two years ago, a prophet gave me a word. He says, God's going to open up Europe to you for ministry. I've been to many nations. Last year, God brought me to five European countries. I don't know, Pastor Ezekiel. And, uh, you know, so he contacted me and we and then he invited me for the conference. It was just a fulfillment of the prophetic word. And after this week in UK, I'll be flying to Spain for ministry also. So just one prophecy, one word from God can change your life, can open new doors, new connection. You receive new grace, new favor. Your life change. Amen. You are here tonight. Don't miss tomorrow morning. One word from God can catapult you from prison to palace like Joseph. Amen. For the vision, this is for you, my dear brother, is for an appointed time. But at the end, it will speak, it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it. Because it will surely come, it will not Terry, God has placed tremendous vision and dreams in your heart. It's not one single, but many. And some dreams and vision, you just tarry. The waiting that God planted those dreams, they are planted, they are not buried. Sometimes the enemy will have you know like it's just like it's buried, it's over, it's gone, nothing is happening. But the Spirit of the Lord wants you to know that it is planted. And just for a season, suddenly it will break forth, it will grow. And you will know it's not by might, not by power, but by my Spirit. And you hear the shout of grace grace, a double shot of grace and this mountain shall be removed. Those hindrances, those obstacles against your dreams and your vision will be removed. Ephesians 3.20, for God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ever ask or dream. And God gave me three A's for you. The first A is Austria. God's going to open the door for you to go to Austria to minister. The second A is Asia. 
The third A is Australia. You won't forget the three A's. So, get ready. God has so much for you to do. Thank you, Lord. You're going to experience transfer of wealth from the hands of the wicked to the hands of the righteous. Isaiah 45. The anointing that was upon Cyrus, the king. And he will have access to the treasure in darkness. God's going to open tremendous gates and, and bronze door will be opened. There will be new doors, new connection, new grace, new favor released upon your life. When you reach 50, there will be a birth of a new season that God will take you the next 20 years after your 50 years to an amazing journey. And this is the foundation, just like the name of this church is the foundation. But the building is going to go up. When you build the foundation, nobody sees. It's quiet. Nothing's visible, nothing outstanding, nothing to show off. But God says, the building is coming. The, 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 the stories after stories is coming. The structure is coming. The things are going to be there and it will be visible. Pastor Ezekiel, I see the strength and, and the grace and stability of the Lord is upon you. And God has given you hidden treasures. You will dig into um, dark places, where coward places, where things are kept hidden. But God will cause you to see the treasures that God has placed in these places, even in the scriptures. And God's going to cause you to dig deep wells. I see... A digging of deep wells in your life. You will dig deep in God. And you will find the wells and the rivers of living water. You will find that the things that you have speaking about, the Lord will enlarge you and you will see even more. You will be able to experience God in a very deep way. And there's going to come waves, ripples and waves of God's revival. God's move that would come upon you. I do not know you have even have an understanding or extent that you know about the moves that God has, is going to cause you to move in. But you're going to move into that grace and that anointing. And it's going to come ripples. It's going to come waves. One wave after another wave. And you will not be satisfied. You will want more. And you will desire more. And more and more and more. Until you're so overwhelmed with it. And still you will not be satisfied. Still there's going to come a cry from your heart for more and God's going to cause that cry to come out of your heart so you can pour more because God's grace God's abundance God's provision is not unlimited it's going to come pouring upon you and that anointing that God has given you is not a small anointing it's going to be a big anointing that breaks many yokes and God wants you to know that you will know your God Lord your God as a great God one who can be Break every yoke And with God Nothing is impossible And I see even um, Reverend Evelyn That the hand of the Lord You are a firebrand You know You are really a firebrand And the hand of the Lord I've never heard you preach I saw you greet But you are a firebrand And you got a very strong Prophetic anointing in you And the Lord's going to cause you To stand in the courts Of God's altar And you're going to call in fire Like never been before And don't let any person Ever despise you Because the hand of the Lord Is on you And you'll be able to cause The fire of God to come In your prayer And you are a prayer warrior You will step into that place Of prayer And, and God has given you Like a Bulldog tenacity You'll hold on And you'll not give up And God is going to cause you To move in that grace That God has given you And that fire That anointing The prophetic anointing Is going to break many yokes And many people Especially women Are going to be so stirred up And encouraged by you And I, I, I see there's going to come A joining of both your yoke The anointing 
uh, those similar in some ways but is very different one with another and i see but god is yoking both of you one will chase a thousand and two will chase tens of thousands and so let's come a yoking together of both in winnings that god has given both of you and god, god's going to call a stirring of the hearts of many people after the ways of god thank you lord Thank you, Lord Father. Let the spirit of wisdom and revelation rest upon them. The eyes of their understanding being enlightened. They may know the hope of your calling, the riches of the inheritance in the saints, and the surpassing greatness of your power that work in and through them. Father, anoint them, use them for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Give Jesus a wonderful clap. May the days ahead of you, you work less and earn more. Amen. I say, may the days ahead of you, you work less and earn more. So that you can have time to serve God. So that the next conference, you can come and help. And you don't have to apply leave or you don't have to work. Amen. Let me share with you a prophetic dream that I believe will speak to you. Little effort, but great return. I believe you would like to have little effort and great return. You do little, but you have great return. That is grace. I give you an illustration of this prophetic dream, which is, speaks about grace of God. I, in this dream, I was fishing. I was fishing. All I had was a line. I don't even have a rod. Isn't that exciting? Fishing without a rod, just a line and a hook. I don't have a bait. Just a line and a hook and I put it into the water. I waited just a short while. Suddenly, I felt a big bite. I pulled out. It was a big fish. But it was a dream, a prophetic dream, not for me, but for somebody here tonight. Little effort, great reward and great gain. Amen, amen. Come with me to Isaiah 43. Birth of a new season. And before I share this, 28 December last year, I was waiting upon the Lord for a word, a prophecy for 2023. Every year, I seek God for a prophetic word for the following year. And I've seen it come to pass many times in our lives and those people that we ministered to. And last year, God gave me a word for this year. You have seven more months. It is called Grace for Promotion. I was very amazed when Pastor Ezekiel said that this conference is Grace for Enlargement. Now, Grace for Promotion and Grace for Enlargement, they are twins. Promotion and Enlargement are twins. They go together. When you're promoted, you're enlarged. When you're promoted, you have a greater impact, greater authority, greater territory. If you are a manager of a company, you can do so much. When you're promoted and become the owner and CEO of the company, that's enlargement, correct? <laughs> Get ready for double grace of promotion and enlargement. Amen? Tonight, I'm going to share with you the birth of a new season. Two key words here, or rather three, birthed, new, seasoned. In our life, we go through season and times. Something you need to let go so that you can embrace new things. You need to let go old things so that you can embrace new things. Sometimes you need to disconnect with certain people to connect with some new one. I'll give you one example. 1 Samuel 16. God spoke to Samuel. 
How long will you grieve for King Saul since I have rejected him? Go anoint your horn with oil. Fill your horn with oil and anoint a new king, one of the sons of Jesse. So Samuel, who brought up King Saul, like a spiritual father, there was an emotional attachment. God says, I rejected him. Disconnect with him and now connect with David. May you know when to disconnect, when to connect, who to disconnect, and who to connect. All right. That's another great sermon. All right. Birthed of a new season. I believe God is doing something new in each one of our lives tonight. And it's going to birth a seed that is so powerful that will change your life. The seed has the power to bear fruit. Amen? Just a vision is a seed. A dream is a, a seed. Before you write a book, you receive a seed thought, a seed understanding, a seed uh, revelation. So everything starts with a seed and before the birth of something, all right? Before your birth form, there is a seed of man that fertilizes the egg, all right? Now, come with me to Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43, I'm reading from the Amplified Version, verse 18 and 19. Isaiah 43, Do not remember the former things or ponder the things of the past. Underline the word past. Do you know there is no future in the past? Well, that's a message. So why waste time? Why cry over spilled milk for 10 years? Cry for 10 minutes, clean up the milk, moved on. I'm not saying you cannot cry. God didn't tell uh, Prophet Samuel in 1 Samuel 16 not to grieve, not to cry. He's, he said, how long? How long do you grieve? Sure, you feel painful, you cry. Sure, somebody died, you cry, right? But she died 50 years ago, so you're still crying for 50 years? How long? How long are you carrying that resentment? How long are you carrying that hurt? How long are you carrying that bitterness? How long are you carrying that disappointment? Hey, enough. There is no future in your Past. Just learn the lesson. Move on. The, the horse is dead. Buried it. Get another horse. Do not call to mind. Do not ponder. Do not remember. Don't waste your time, your energy, your talent with the past. There's absolutely nothing you can change about the past. What is important is today, receiving a new word. That will change your tomorrow. That will impact lives and generations and nations. Amen? Alright. Next verse. Listen carefully. God says, I'm doing, about to do a new thing. Say a new thing. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even... Put a road in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. I've been to Middle East quite a bit. How many of you have been to Dubai? Do you know where is Dubai? It's actually a very central of the earth. Wherever you go in Dubai, it's about six, seven hours flight. Now in the wilderness, in the desert, you cannot see road. You cannot see river. But God says, even in the wilderness, I can make a way where there is no way. I can make life flows, rivers flow. So in your barren situation, God can make it fruitful. One of the amazing miracles in the Middle East is the palm tree that bears dates. Do you know what's dates? Now why is it a miracle? If you look at the wilderness, the, the desert, it's dry. That's where the palm tree survived. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree in the desert, not in the water garden. 
Now, it's dry, it's salty, and there is no vegetation that grows, except a few like the dates. And what is so amazing, the dates is so sweet and so nutritious. The Muslim break fast every day during the Ramadan month, just eating dates. It's amazing. So sweet. I use it for boiling soup. I just put some in the soup and it brings up the flavor and the nutrients. So, out of your desert situation, out of your desert desperation, there's going to be sweet dates. There's going to be rivers in the desert. There's going to be fruitfulness. I receive. We're going to look at Psalms 1 to 6 tonight, which is a prophetic psalm. It has three season, past, present, future. And within this psalm, you will hear the voice of God speaking to you. All right? Psalms 1 to 6. I encourage you to get into the Word of God. Read constantly. Read consistently. Hear the Word of God. And you do not know what God can speak to you. You know, tonight when Pastor Ezekiel was speaking, Noah found grace. I read that a million times. I've preached on that. But tonight, I receive a new insight. Noah found grace. So what I'm saying is, the Word of God grows. What you read 20 years ago may mean different today. Amen? Alright, Psalms 1, 2, 6 in the NIV version. I normally use New King James, but once a while I switch because some translation brings out the meaning. Alright? Psalms 1, 2, 6, verse 1. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, Zion, the type of church, the God's people, we were like those who dream. Underline the word restored. Verse 1 and 2 is the past. Our mouth will fill with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nation, the Lord has done great things for us. Now, if you know simple English, verse 1 and 2 talk about the past. Say past. Now, some of our past needs redemption and restoration. Underline restored. How many of you have lost something in the past that needs to be restored? Can I see your hand? Now, here is the key. God will certainly restore just like He promised. And it's going to be like a dream. Say like a dream. That means, is it real? God could restore that. Is it possible that God has another blessing, another open door? Can God restore something that I lost in my life? I want to share with you a very personal example. Many years ago, we, we, I had a very good friend, probably one of my best friends. He was in another city. Whenever we visit him, we will stay with him. And he's a businessman. One day he asked me to invest in his business, which I did. I emptied all my savings and I invested in his business. Wrong choice. Greedy. Sometime, remember in every investment, even though it's genuine and legal, there's a risk. Say risk. In business, it's risk. You can lose it all, you can have great profit, right? There are a lot of businessmen who went bankrupt, they didn't tell you. Only you hear stories about Bill Gates and others who made it. So, say risk. I was greedy, honestly, because he promised that whatever I give him in one year's time, I have 100% return. Not bad, right? So the 100% return the next year attracted me. <laughs> Do you know how people are scammed? Two reasons. They are naive. Secondly, they are greedy. How can a total stranger give you $1 million? How can you didn't buy something and you get a free gift? 
how can somebody do not know you? You are a 65-year-old lady and this 30-year-old man wants to marry you. <laughs> Sorry, I mean none of you. Some Malaysians do. <laughs> right? They say there is no free lunch. So if you have a free lunch, you better think twice. What's the motive? Okay, anyway. I got cheated. Isn't that exciting? Now, it's all legal, black and white. So what do I do? I want to take him to court. Isn't that exciting? So I went to see my friend, a Christian lawyer. He says to me, Pastor Paul, do you know what the Bible teaches about taking a lawsuit against your brother? I said, yes, of course I know. I'm a pastor. I preached. <laughs> then I asked him the next question. I said, sir, how do I recover my money? He got no answer. Get a gangster, beat him up, threaten him, kill his children. No, no, no. I, I don't do that, okay? I, I'm a Christian. So I asked this Christian lawyer. I said, okay, how do I recover my money? He couldn't answer me. Ah, send a letter. So he wrote and sent a letter. Now, the next day, I read the Bible consistently from Genesis to Revelation. I had a little garden and I sit there in the morning for my devotion and I read. Guess what I was reading? 1 Corinthians 6 that morning. I wasn't jumping like monkey here, there, everywhere. I was reading continue from yesterday and I read 1 Corinthians 6. You know what 1 Corinthians 6 says? It came to verse 6. I couldn't believe. Dare you take another brother to court? Why not you be cheated? The word cheated was found there. I felt, wow, it was like... You see, verse 7. Cheated all. Oh, you know, how many of you have felt... And do you know the word of God is like a sword? I couldn't read anymore. How could it be so accurate? Yesterday, I asked the lawyer to send a letter to sue my brother who cheated my life saving. And the next day, God spoke to me. Let go. <laughs> Forgiveness is easy when it does not involve money. In fact, forgiveness is already difficult for so many people that does not involve money. What if it involves your life savings? So what do I do? I have a choice. I have a choice. I have a choice. Say, I have a choice. Tonight you have a choice. You just hear my message. You hear the voice of God. You have a choice to obey or disobey. Maybe God is speaking to you tonight. Learn to forgive and let go. You can live long and healthy. So, I've come a long way. I know whenever you obey God, you may seem to be a loser in the beginning. You may seem to be a loser in the beginning. Beginning is not as important as the ending. I would rather have a great ending than a great beginning. Your beginning can be great, but if your ending is not great, what's the use? So I decided in my heart, I would obey the scripture, I would forgive him. How many of you know that's not the rest of the story? <coughs> the next morning, say this next morning. Same place, reading the Bible, prayer in my garden. Suddenly God showed me a vision. I saw across the garden, my little garden, one word, prosperity, written in gold. One word, no voice from heaven, nothing, just that vision. I knew what God was saying to me. Yesterday, you lost your savings by forgiving that brother. But watch how I'm going to prosper you. My wife has traveled me around the world for 33 years. My son, 17 years. By the grace of God, I've been to 60 countries. That's out of date. <laughs> Just imagine our air 
ticket alone. Last year, we went to nine different countries. I mentioned to you, we went to Europe, five different countries. Just imagine our air ticket alone. What I'm saying is, God has restored our fortune. May God restore what you have lost tonight. And it's going to be like a dream. You wake up the next morning, wow! Say it like a dream. You know what's so beautiful about dream? It's effortless. You just sleep and God speaks to you. You just sleep and God does something for you. You just sleep and the seed grows and bear fruits and the fruit grows while you are sleeping. The word for you tonight is while you're split, sleeping, God is working something new. God is redeeming your past. God is restoring your past tonight. My son is a miracle baby. He died in the womb of the mother at nine weeks old. No heartbeat. My wife was discharging decayed blood. My our guy who is actually a senior pastor, he's our pastor right now of a big church in Malaysia, probably the biggest church, more than five thousand members. But he was a former gynecologist, obstetrician. He a personal friend, so he gave us a letter because the next day he was going to for a church camp and his brother is working also as a gynae and asked us to take this letter to see the brother the next day to clean up the womb to, to clean up the womb so that the dead fetus would not cause toxic and poison anyway to make the short story long I came back home I just put the letter aside and I really believe God for a miracle a week later we went back to see Dr. Chu well God gave me one scripture you see the Word of God is very powerful. Say powerful. When God gave you a scripture or enlightened a scripture, it becomes a prophecy. So the prophetic word God gave me was found in James 1.17. Every good gift, every perfect gift comes from above. And I say to, to my little fetus, little baby in the womb, you are a good and perfect gift. That's what I pray. You are a good and perfect gift. From six, And then the following week we went, Heartbeat came back. God raised him back from, from the dead. Between six to nine months, his head was not growing. The placenta is dead and the doctor was very concerned. Again, we went back and prayed. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. You see, every conception, every gift of a person born in this world, I believe is a gift from God. Because life comes from God. How do I know? Well, a couple can be married for 20 years trying to have a child and nothing happens, right? Until God says, yes, let there be life. Anyway, so he was born. And uh, people from all over the world have heard our testimony. We have shared it many times. And uh, we were speaking in a very big uh, prayer fasting in India. 50,000 people came for the prayer fasting. We shared our testimony, prayed for the sick. Anyhow, we were in a foreign land. One Nigerian couple came up for prayer. The wife was bleeding and she was like about two months pregnant. She was, she was bleeding. It was a threatened miscarriage. So as I lay hands, and they come with great faith and expectation and, and they think I'm a man of great faith because I've experienced miracle. Jesus says, only your faith like a mustard seed is enough. Say to this mountain, it shall be removed. And when I laid hands on this couple to pray for healing and hopefully the baby born normal, the Holy Spirit spoke to me, this baby, they will lose the baby. Now, how could I tell this couple came with great expectation and hope? I don't like to pour cold water. People already had so much bad news, right? I want to be the anointed feet that bring good news. How lovely are the mountains, are the feet of those who bring good news. So I say, God, I cannot tell them 
this is bad news. I mean, they come with hope and prayer and, and you just tell them, you prophesy over them, the baby is going to die. <laughs> what am I there for? <laughs> I say, Lord, give me something. And suddenly like a flash, Genesis 4, 29. The Bible says that the genealogy of Adam, Eve came down the line and then the next is Abel. Right? But Cain, the brother, killed Abel. The seed that's supposed to follow the genealogy is gone. But in Genesis 4, 29, the Bible says, Adam knew Eve, and she conceived, and God blessed them with another seed called Seth. So that scripture became alive. So all that I prayed for them was, I say, God is going to bless you with another seed. God's going to bless you with another child. How many know the meaning is the same? But it's positive. It's also a prophecy. They're going to lose their child, but God's going to bless them with another seed, another child. Tonight, I wonder you have lost something. A seed, a disappointment, a land, a house money, whatever you have lost, opportunity, open doors, promotion, enlargement, whatever you have lost, just send to your feet quickly right now. I want to pray for you because the Lord wants to restore the fortune of Zion and He will do it and the next morning you wake up, you'll be just like a dream. Do you believe that word is for you tonight? Lift your hands. God will restore what you lost in your past. I don't know what you lost tonight. But God is able to redeem and restore. Just thank God by faith tonight, Lord. Thank God for restoring what I lost in the past. You lost that job. You lost that church. You lost that friend. You lost that money. You lost that house. You lost that opportunity. You lost that child. Today, God is able to restore. Just like He restored the fortune of Zion, just like He restored my finances, my life savings that was lost, God can restore. Just believe all things only believe Father tonight we thank you for your word your prophetic word Lord let your hand comes down from heaven tonight and touch every person here who has lost something in the past Maybe you are a victim of people and circumstance. Maybe you are rejected like Lear. Maybe you are a victim like Bathsheba. A victim of a king's lust over her. She lost the baby, she lost her husband. But God restored her and gave her a Solomon. Maybe you have rejection like Leah. Does God still remember you? Father, lift both your hands to Jesus right now. Father, I thank you. Just as you restored the fortune of Zion, you will restore our fortune, what we have lost what the enemy has stolen, what man has taken away and cheated. 
men who have betrayed us lie. Lord, I thank you that you are well able to restore and redeem. Father, we know that in heaven all things are possible. And I give you all praise and all glory. Receive tonight. Receive tonight wherever you are. In Jesus' name. Say, I receive. I receive my restoration. Say it like you believe it. I receive my restoration. One more time. Let the devil hear it. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. How many of you know Leah in the Bible? Jacob worked seven years to marry Leah. And then on the wedding night, he thought he had Leah in the bed. Next morning, it was, sorry, he thought he had Rachel. Just testing you whether you're awake. I'm not awake because it's three o'clock in the morning in Malaysia. I just flew in yesterday. I'm still, I'm awake, praise God. So, how many of you got married? Can I see your hand? You're married, you're married. Or you were married. You're a widow now, you're a widower. Wave your hand. Did you marry the right one? The next day, was it the right girl, the right man you married? <laughs> so, Jacob has to work another seven, day, seven years to marry Rachel. And Leah, from day one, received rejection. None of her fault, right? By the way, what you sow, you reap. Jacob deceived the brother and the father. So he met another greater deceiver, Uncle Laban. So in life, what you sow, you reap. And what you reap is always more than what you sow. So be careful. Make sure you sow the right seeds. That's another sermon. Anyway, but how many know God is just? God knows how to pay you back. Say payday. My Bible says in Romans 12, 19, God will repay. Vengeance belongs to God. And I will repay. May God repay you. I receive. How did God repay Leah? By giving her many children. Right? How many children Rachel has? Two. How many children Leah has? Ten. Clever. Now, the genealogy was Abraham. Isaac, Jacob. Who is the next? Judah. Who gave birth to Judah? Leah, clever. May you birth praise in the midst of rejection. May you give birth to Judah in the midst of all your rejection. And there is a birth of Judah in your life if you have faced rejection. God is amazing. He's a God of restoration and redemption. I told you, the best is the best. Alright, let's go to the next verse in Psalms 1, 2, 6. Are you blessed tonight? Verse 3. The Lord has done great things for us and we are filled with joy. Present tense. Your days of weeping are over. Those that sow in tears shall reap with joy. Anybody here you have lost your joy, stand to your feet right now. I want to pray that God will restore the joy of the Lord. Through circumstances, through situation, through financial challenges and things in your life, you have lost your joy. Stand to your feet. You know what I'm talking. 
stand to your feet. You have lost your joy. You have lost your joy to come to church. You have lost your joy to read the Word. You have lost your joy to serve God. You have lost that joy, that exuberant, that excitement. Stand to your feet right now. The Word of God promised that God's going to do great things. And your heart and your mouth shall fill with joy. Why joy is so important? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Because joy is the fruit of the Spirit. Joy is not based on circumstance. Joy is, joy is a fruit. Paul says, I joy and rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, Rejoice, Philippians 4.4 4. Do you know Paul was in prison when he wrote that? Change, beaten up, pain In prison, in jail And he says Rejoice always even though you're in prison And again I say rejoice Father in Jesus name me You restore the joy of the Lord upon those who are standing tonight. Regardless of what they are going through, Father, fill them with the joy just like you restored the fortune of Zion because the Lord is going to do great things for you, those who are standing. Receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Verse Three. Look at verse 4 It's future Past, verse 1, verse 2 Verse 3 is present Verse 4, 5, 6 is future Say future Restore our fortune, Lord Like streams in Negev Those who sow in tears Will reap with joy With songs of joy those who go out weeping, carrying seeds to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. Get ready to receive joy unspeakable and full of glory. My son uh, studied in America. He graduated the first degree and I went to his graduation. I cried. I cry with tears of joy, tears of celebration, tears of victory. You know, you can cry with pain, with, with challenges, with difficulties, with disasters. But you can also cry with joy of victory, celebration of God's goodness. May you cry with the joy of celebration and victory and blessing. Do you know why I cried when my son graduated? Because he fought so many battles. And for him to graduate, it was a miracle. It was a great blessing. It was a great victory. May you have tears of joy. Tears of victory. Tears of celebration. Have you won? Have you seen somebody won the Olympic gold and they cry? That's a good tears. You know, tears is the highest expression of human emotion. Some human emotion cannot be expressed by words. It can express by tears. When somebody gives you a special gift that touched your heart, ladies are easy, they cry. The, the word thank, I thank you is not enough, but the tears. Do you know God understands tears? Tears are very precious. God keeps your tears in the bottle. That's why your tears are not wasted. Your tears are not wasted. Those that sow in tears will always reap with joy. Now, what the future is, verse 4. Restore our fortune like the streams of Negev. Underline streams of Negev. What's that? 
It's a miraculous phenomenon that happened in Israel. I told you earlier that Israel is a wasteland, it's a desert. Nothing can grow. You see, water is life, say life. Vegetation, agriculture depends on water. Life depends on water. No water, no life. No water, no fruits. No water, no cultivation. No water, no prosperity. Am I right? No water, no livestock. Am I right? Those days, wealth was, get, was measured by livestock and agriculture produce. Am I right? Abraham was very rich in silver and gold and in livestock. Alright, today is stock market. Those days is livestock. Okay. So, what is the streams of Negev? I'm going to show you a YouTube. I hope the media team got it. It's only less than two minutes. This is a vast desert land. And suddenly, these gushing water will come from nowhere. Science could not prove how the water come, when the water come, where the water come, but the water came. Did you remember water came out from the rock? How many of you know our God is a God of miracles? Now, as you watch this video clipping, in your mental picture, take a photograph, or you may take a photograph with your cell phone, and this is a prophetic picture of God's serendipity. Divine serendipity. I want to leave with you this prophetic word. Divine serendipity. S-E-R-E-N-D-I-P-I-T-Y. Anybody knows what's the meaning of serendipity? Only one. Two. Serendipity. It's not a normal English word that we use. You must be a learned man, huh, Pastor Robert. How do you know that word serendipity? Anyway, serendipity, let me put it this way. It's a pity if you look for a job. It is serendipity when the job looks for you. It's a pity you work very hard to fish and there is no fish. It's a serendipity when you put a line and a hook without a bait and you catch fish. That is serendipity. Okay, let me condense it for you. I make it very simple. I'm a very simple preacher. Serendipity means sudden and unexpected blessing. May you receive sudden and unexpected blessing before 31st December 2023. I receive. One last chance. May you receive divine serendipity before 31st December 2023. I'll give you an example of serendipity in the Bible. Are you ready? Before we look at the video. Media team, are you ready? Okay, just give me two more minutes. Roof, the book of Roof of Four Seasons. I'm going to close with this. You want me to go on? <laughs> I'm going to close with this book of Four Seasons. Chapter 1, Famine. There was so much loss, disappointment, death. Elimelech, together with his wife, Marlon and Chilon, migrated from Bethlehem to Moab. They settled for 10 years. Two sons, Marlon and Chilon, married two wives, Naomi, uh, Ruth and Opa. Within 10 years, three men in the house died. Famine, lack of food, lack of joy, lack of employment, lack, 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 death, disappointment, loss. The last three years in the pandemic, that could describe the world, your life. But God's going to birth a new season. There's a new season coming. Chapter 2, Roof. There was barley harvest. There's harvest season coming. Ruth went to glean among all the fields he went to glean that belongs to Boaz. He met Boaz, a redeemer, a type of redeemer, Jesus Christ. Ruth is a type of the church. Naomi is a type of the Holy Spirit, the mother-in-law, guided Ruth. Chapter 2, she gleaned, she went to the field and she got to collect the grain, pluck the grain, 
But Boaz saw her and found favor and like her. She experienced divine serendipity. Boaz told the workers, just bless her and throw the grains on her. She don't even have to look for it. Just she, as she walks, she gathers the grain. As she walks, she gathers the grain. Can you imagine as you walk, you just gather the 50 pounds, 100 pounds, 20 pounds. As you put on the line, you just put up one fish, another fish, another fish. You work less and you earn more. This is called divine serendipity. Now, Ruth experienced new connection, new favor, new provision, new blessing new open doors. May you experience these five things in your life. New open doors, new provision, new blessing, new connection, new favour! Okay, look at the video. Captured it. That is a sudden unexpected blessing and the land that was barren becomes fruitful what was useless becomes useful what was barren become fruitful if there's any area in your life that is barren may it become fruitful if you're financially lack and barren may you be blessed and prosperous just look at the video and then we'll close Thank you, media. Now, notice there's no rain, huh? It hardly rain in, in, in the desert. Praise God. I think this is a picture of revival. It's going to come suddenly, unexpectedly. You know, it's just like suddenly there's a river. Scientists don't know how the water comes, where the water comes, or when the water comes. And there's no rain. Where does the water come? I don't know. Anybody knows where waterfall water comes from? Anybody been to Niagara Falls? Nobody. Anybody would like to go to Niagara Falls someday? May God grant the desire of your heart. It's really one of the seven wonders. Now, where does the water come from? I don't know. So much water. Tell me where the water comes from. Next time you go to Niagara Falls, check where the source is. There's a waterfall at home that I go to. I wonder where the water comes from. It's always flowing. May that be a picture of your life. Always flowing with a blessing. You know, there's the book of Ezekiel 47. The water came out from that temple. And where the river flows, there are fishes. May God grant you new fishes, my dear brother. May God bring new fishes to this church. May God bring some Asians to this church. Some Chinese. Some white people too. That's a good mixed color. Asian, white, black. 
God loves everybody. Let's stand. Are you blessed tonight? It's not just a video. It's not just a... It's a prophecy. Sudden and unexpected. Divine serendipity. How many of you are blessed? How many of you God is speaking to you tonight? Just lift your hands to Jesus. Just thank Him. Can we just pray in tongues for a little while? Robo Sakaya Rabba Santa Rabba. Oh, Riba Baba So. Oh, Rabba So Torabushiki. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah, Rabba So. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus, you know the song, God will make a way. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus tonight, may you receive the streams of Negev, the, sur the divine serendipity from heaven above, the sudden and unexpected blessing that the windows of heavens open and pour down blessings that you have no room to contain. It's going to come suddenly, unexpectedly. It cannot be explained like grace. You just receive. Tonight, may you receive the grace for promotion, the grace for enlargement. In Jesus' name, God will make a way. You believe that? For so God will make a Where there seems to be no way Where there seems to be no way He works in ways We cannot see He will make a way Sing that song one more time. God will make a way. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He walks in ways we cannot see. He will make a way. to his side with love and strength for each new day he will make a way he will make a way just wherever you are the next
next one minute I just want you to pray oh I know the Holy Spirit is just speaking to you where you are just connect to what God has started to do in this place wherever you are the next one minute just begin to say Lord I receive your word I receive grace for enlargement I receive grace for promotion I thank you because of the way you have made thank you because of the rivers in the desert thank you because of open doors just wherever you are begin to pray tonight and just begin to say Lord thank you for your word thank you what for what you have started to do in my life tonight thank you because of breakthroughs and testimonies and miracles thank you because I'm going home with the grace for enlargement and promotion tonight in the name of Jesus I just wanted to pray and just say Lord I receive it tonight thank you for your word thank you for the breakthroughs thank you for what you are doing for me blessed be your name oh God blessed be your name father we thank you for tonight we give you all the praise and all the honor and all the adoration we thank you because we know that you have started to do great things in our lives we know oh God that this is the beginning of good news for us every burden is lifted every heavy heart is full of joy tonight in the name of Jesus blessed be your name oh God in Jesus mighty name we pray somebody say amen oh come on someone celebrate the name of the Lord in the house are you excited for what God has started to do yes 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 if you are I want you to give the Lord a, a big shout of hallelujah